G'day guys, how are you? I'm Isky, welcome to my YouTube video. I'm just gonna try and rattle off a really fast one for you. Uh, I just had a, someone who bought a dryer off me um, over the weekend return it. And uh, yeah, it's just a really unusual problem. Um, I test these things, I fix them very well, I test them incredibly thoroughly. Uh, but one thing that I do not do when testing a machine is I do not invert it, I do not turn it upside down and test it. I just always, you know, test them the right way up. Now this apparently works perfectly the right way up, like it should, uh, but he, this guy, his name's Richard, he said, um, yeah, we want to put it on the wall, turn it upside down, and it's just got this really weird noise. And he, with the way he was describing it, he was saying it was screeching. and. Uh, it kind of is screeching, but it's not the squealing type of effect that I was expecting. Uh, I said, bring it back, mate, I'll fix it up for you. You can pick it up later on. So that's what he's done, he's just dropped it off. And the sound that it's making is very unusual. So I thought, why not Why not make a video on this? Because um, if it's kind of stumping me, someone who's fixed you know, a couple of thousand of these things. Um, I mean, I've heard this sound before. I've fixed this quite a few times before. Honestly, I can't remember what the problem was. Um, but um, yeah, we'll fix it now. And at least by the end of the video, if you're experiencing the same kind of sound, um, then hopefully we'll give you some direction. All right, so let's, I've got it plugged in. I wanna show you the sound. I'm just gonna close this door and it should fire up straight away. Right, that'll do. It's a weird one, isn't it? So, um, now the thing is, these dryers, they do stop and then they go in the reverse direction. Uh, when it goes in the opposite direction, it, it does do it very occasionally, but it doesn't do it as much, which is beside the point. He, Richard thought that was kind of a, dis, you know, and something that is worth investigating. It's not, it's, um, it, that just happens with noises. They will happen in one direction more than they'll happen in the other direction. So that is obviously happening from some kind of friction, some kind of something that's turning. So there's only a few things in this machine that will turn. Um, the first thing you would probably look at is the, the idler. I thought that was an idler straight away, but I don't think it is now. I've been thinking about it. It's not the bearing. The bearing is another thing that kind of turns. It's not the bearing. Um, then I thought maybe it was the fan, you know, by the way, this is a bearing, this is a, um, an idler. This is the inside of the machine. The idlers basically sit on here. I can't see how that noise is being made by that. I honestly, I don't, I can't see it. Um, but we'll investigate. I don't know why it's just kind of doing it on, you know, upside down and not the other way up. That's a really weird thing. So we'll have a look at this, but, um, so it's, it's not the bearing. I don't think it's this. When Richard was leaving, I thought to myself, it's gotta be the fan, it has to be the fan. But guess what? I have a feeling that it may be the motor. I have a feeling there's bearings inside this motor. I have a feeling that it might be just the motor. And by turning it upside down, it's just putting different types of stresses um, on the motor, <laughs> on the dryer in general. So I have a feeling that we might have to replace the motor, but um, before we do that, what I might quickly do is uh, open this thing up, get inside, and I might just quickly throw that idler that I've just placed on there. I might just replace the idler, quickly button her up again, play it and see what happens. Just to discount that, I, I can't see it being the idler, but it may be. Um, no, it's not the idler. We'll be able to tell just by looking at it. But anyway, let's work this out. But I have a feeling that it's the motor. That's okay, I've got plenty of motors lying around. Um, we'll just have to re replace a motor. Uh, I'm not gonna be showing you how to do that. I've got heaps of videos of me doing this, you know, opening these up and replacing virtually every single component in 
a clothes dryer, especially a Simpson, an Electrolux, and a Westinghouse, as well as you know a couple of things where um, Fisher and Pikel dryers are concerned. So if you wanna know how to do it, have a look at some of those other videos, but this here, this video is purely me trying to work out what that sound is. Uh, this could be very helpful for other people experiencing that sound. In fact, I wanna make a video where I am, you know, kind of attacking all different types of dryer sounds that, you know, can happen. And I'll tell everybody exactly what's causing what type of sound because they're all different, these sounds. But uh, I guess we're gonna work out what this one is. So let's get into it. I'm just gonna quickly open this up and uh, have a look around. Okay, just just quickly, I'm just going to get my finger and turning the bearing. Yeah, it's perfect. It's like a brand new bearing. In fact, I have a feeling that's what I needed to replace to fix this machine before selling it. Just go and get a light. Okay, so I obviously didn't have to do anything with this idler when I was fixing this machine. Like I said, I'm pretty sure this machine just needed a new bearing. Now, I am feeling just this shaft, the you know, the shaft that the bearing sits on. And if I had done anything with that, I would have cleaned this. It's a little bit grippy. It's a little bit grippy. And uh, what happens is over the years, let's get some light down there. Over the years, dust gets in between where the bearing slips on and the shaft. And I think what happens is it just kind of grinds away and makes like a paste or something. And yeah, it gets very grippy and um, that can, you know, make problems down the line. So listen, first, what I'm gonna do first is actually, I'm not gonna replace the bearing yet not the bearing, the idler yet. What I'm gonna do is take the idler off, clean this shaft, put it back together, you know, and um, just play it and see if it's still doing it. I'm pretty sure it will still be doing it. And if it is still doing it, well then I'm gonna replace the motor because that's the only thing that I can think it'd be. I mean, I'll check out the fan before we replace the motor, make sure it's not loose. But um, if the motor was loose, then it should be making noises um, when it's up the right way anyway. So what I'm like I said, I'm just gonna pull this off, clean this shaft, stick this back on and see how we go. All right, so this is kind of interesting as well. I just went to lift this up. Normally these just lift up straight away. They just lift up and you can pull them, they just pull off. But you can see this, this is stopping. It's actually stopping. It's stopping. Now it's, it's kind of coming off now. It's a lot more friction to pull it off now. I've got it off. Okay, that may be our issue. Um, that may be the issue. And that may even that may even explain why it is only making that sound in one direction. Because remember, these things are designed to slide up and down, up and down this shaft when they change direction, okay? Hang on, let me just get this back on. Come on, there we go. So yeah, when the, the bowl goes in one direction, it'll, it might be down the bottom, but when it changes the direction, these normally slide up. Now, I have a feeling maybe that's the issue. It's actually a lot smoother now. So, man, that'd be a really easy fix. Let me just set you there. 
But before I do, I'll show you how I clean these things. I, all I use is this stuff here. I use this orange power. It's $6 a bottle at Coles. Let me just set you, where can I put you? I'll find you somewhere to sit. In fact, let me take the bowl out and we'll sit you where the bowl sits. Make it easier. Okay, there we go. That's better. Cool. Okay, let me just stick you, stick this here. Get me some light. Now, that feels good going that way. I mean, the motor sounds okay when you spin it by hand. Anyway, let's clean this and see what we got. So all I do is just kind of saturate a bit of, this is just a cotton t-shirt. And I just kind of put it there and slide it up and down, right? You want it to be like smooth as glass, really you do. You want this to be smooth as glass. By the way, I may as well tell you in this video, if you have a dryer that is squeaking, squeaking, and you can't work out why it's got such a high pitched squeal, this is the reason because um, the idler, if you have a look inside the idler, will get grooves inside the metal part that goes over this metal part, and that is what's making those high-pitched squeals, all right? But that's gonna be explained in another video. Like I said, I'm gonna be making that video. So that feels good to me, that feels very smooth. Um, so this is the idler that I've just pulled off. Pretty sure that looks good. What I have also started doing is actually cleaning the inside of the hole with um, a Q-tip. I'm just gonna saturate that with a bit of this solution. This one feels really nice. A lot of the time you can feel the grooves when you're cleaning it like this. And if it's got the grooves, um, then yeah, it normally makes that squealing noise. A completely different noise to what we're hearing in this video. But uh, like I said, I'll cover that in other video. All right, so let me just slide this on here now. Now it's still a little bit, no, oh, no, that feels okay. Uh, I can still feel, it feels like there's a bit of a burr up the top there, just a slight burr, nothing major. So what I like to do um, is, I've got some water here with some wet sandpaper. This is just 400 grit sandpaper that I get from Bunnings. I normally just stick it over the top here and go up and down or just twist it around like that. Um, I guess you could probably use emery paper, but the thing is you don't want to scratch this thing up any more than it already is. You want it to be smooth, so I'm just going to do that. Now, a lot of people, and I've done this in previous videos, and I'm actually not going to be doing it anymore. A lot of people will put some grease on there. I don't want to put grease on there anymore because I think that almost makes it kind of like a hardens up over time and can make the problem worse. But uh, let me just slide this on now. There we go, it just drops on. See that? Listen, let's try this out, see if that noise has gone. I'm just going to put the bowl back in, belt back on, and try it out. Yeah, I hear that. Listen. All right, so that didn't fix it. I'm glad I didn't have to put it back together to discover that. Um, okay, let's keep going. It's gotta be, it must be, it's either the motor or the fan. 
Either way, we have to pull the motor out to have a look at the fan anyway. So if the fan's looking good after I pull the motor out, I'm just going to replace the, um, the motor. Alright, so... <laughs> Uh, listen, I'll give you a quick rundown of what I'm about to do to pull this motor out. So basically, on the bottom of the machine, we have to take that screw out, that screw out, that screw out. These are all quarter-inch hex bits, by the way. You're better off getting a hex bit, quarter-inch hex bit at, um, at uh, Bunnings. I think they cost $6. Um, this one here is just a Phillips head. Also, what we have to undo is we basically have to take this um, heat sensor off, two screws, one here, one here, just kind of let that sit on its side. Uh, we have to undo these screws, one, two, there's one there. Now there's one right in the corner that you have to get through via this hole. So you need a really long extension bit. And then there's one in there. Once they've been taken out, you disconnect this plug because that is connected to your capacitor. And then we will just pull the motor out. So that's just a very quick explanation of what I'm about to do. I'll do it, I'll time lapse this. Or maybe I won't, we'll see. Uh, by the way, these may look the same, these screws down the bottom, these hex screws here, but they are bigger. These are seven mil, they are not quarter inch, okay? Uh, and by the way, before I take these screws off, I got lucky with this dryer. A lot of the time, you can see the capacitor here, a lot of the time the capacitor is in the corner here and what you need to do is actually remove the capacitor first. To get to the screw that's, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see down the bottom? There you can, there you go, there you go. See, you can see that screw down there? That's the one that we need to take out. Right down there. We've got to get to that. Okay, but we got lucky because normally you have to move the capacitor out of the way. So this is an older style dryer and uh, the older style dryers were made a little bit differently. Seven inch mil, sorry, seven mil hex bit. Dropped it, <laughs> dropped it. Dropped it again. Okay, it's just sitting in there. All right, all those screws are taken off. Let's just undo this plug. Now there's a tab here, you see this tab? You have to push that in and pull this apart. There you go. Now this, after we get rid of that heat sensor, this should just lift up. There you go. Let's have a look at this. Let's bring this. Let's just put this here. We'll have a quick look at the fan. Let's just have a look at the fan. So there's that screw that um, I had to use the long extension to get to. All right, let's just lift this up. The fan feels good. It doesn't feel, let me just... It's hard to kind of spin it correctly when it's out of the dry. I don't know what you're seeing. Just move all of this stuff. Yeah, this, the fan's good. Yeah. 
Let me just grab a and uh, let me just grab a spanner. Just make sure this is tight. I mean, it, it is a little bit loose, but that still shouldn't make that noise. I am almost 100% certain that the actual sound that we're hearing are the bearings inside the motor here. In fact, there you go, listen to this. Yeah, there you go, can you hear that? Listen, it's gonna be easier if I just remove this fan. Gotta do that anyway when we replace the motor. In fact, I'm gonna put this fan back on after I pull it off. <laughs> Look at this, see this stuff here? That's just all lint, that's what gets built up inside. That's what ruins your motors and um, your idlers, all of this stuff. Okay, let me just move this bit of steel out of the way. Let me just push this back on there. Let me just put this rubber bit just back on there, rubber sleeve. Let me just put this fan back on here as well. Okay, now let's spin it and see if we can hear that noise any better. See, going in this direction is nice. It's perfect, but if we go the other direction, let's do it again. There you go, you can hear it. Can you hear that? Hopefully you can hear that. All right, stop it, go in the other direction. Yeah, in the other direction, it's perfect. That's why he was hearing it fine in one direction and in the other, the, I think it's, that's maybe clockwise. There you go, folks. That motor is stuffed. <laughs> All right, good fan though, good fan. We'll pull that off, oh, if we can. Come on, there we go. I'll take these rubber bits. Um, and I'm gonna keep this capacitor. The capacitor is really good. The capacitor is good. So I'm just gonna pull these terminals off, these plugs off the ter terminals. All right. <laughs> so this stuff here <laughs> is still good. This here is junk. I mean, it's not junk. It's not junk. Um, if you're happy to, <laughs> it depends. It's funny, you know, if that is happening to your clothes dryer, I would suggest Maybe turning it upside down. <laughs> Even if it's up the right way at the moment, turn it upside down, it might work. You might get some more years out of it. But um, anyway, I am going to replace that. I don't know if I'll do it in the video. I might do a time lapse, I'm not sure. I'll film it. I don't know how I'll do it with the editing, but that's the deal, guys. That sound is a motor. So I'm gonna have to go and find myself a new motor now. Stick it in. And we'll be apple pie. All right, so I got us another motor. There we go. I've just pulled this out of another machine. And uh, yeah, cool. So this here is our original stuff. This is all going in, you know, back to the dump. So cool, we're keeping this. Now I'll show you why they threw the, this machine out or gave it to me. Check this out. If we turn this around, have a look at the capacitor. It's totally blown. Look at all the stuff coming out. So what I'm gonna to have to do is quickly pull this off, stick the original capacitor on this motor, stick this entire thing back in our machine, test it out.
Well, there you go, folks. We fixed another one. How good is that? <laughs> I guess the whole purpose behind this video wasn't to show you how to replace a motor. It was basically to show you the meaning behind that particular sound. Uh, it's a very distinct type of sound. So if you hear that sound, um, it's, I would say, 100% the, the motor, the bearings need replacing. So it's up to you whether you want to replace the motor. I guess you could possibly replace the bearings in the motor. Um, I've never done that, I never will do that. But uh, that's an option, I guess. Just remember that this uh, Simpson here is exactly the same dryer as an Electrolux, as well as a Westinghouse. Basically, you saw the back cover of this machine. If you have a machine that has a back cover that looks like that, and if you hear that noise in your dryer, it's your motor. So there you go. Anyway, I really hope this has helped some people identify that sound. Um, I'd like to say thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.